we're going to discuss our rigorous testing of technical analysis. But first, some disclaimers. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell any security ever. This is not advice. Disclaimer number two, the results here are provided for general information purposes as a convenience to the viewers. The materials are not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person, firm, or corporation. And disclaimer three, a reminder, please note that the executions and other statistics on this video are hypothetical and do not reflect the impact, if any, of certain market factors such as liquidity and slippage. All right, let's go. So the point of what we're doing here starts with a simple observation. We've all seen magnificent charts with indicators drawn on them that we can, with our own eyes, see are in fact accurate. We can look at the prior history, look at the lines that have been drawn, but the goal is not to have a pattern drawn on a single chart. The goal is to be able to pick up a pattern that has worked on 10,000 charts, hundreds of thousands of times, over decades. That is the goal of rigorous testing of technical analysis. These are the realities of technical analysis and why sometimes it feels like everyone always has a chart that looks good, but it never quite works when you try it yourself. Today, we stop that pattern of blindfolded technical analysis, and we apply it to millions of data points over hundreds of thousands of back tests to give a rigorous result. In this webinar, by the time we're done, you will see the top performing combination of technical indicators with respect to moving averages and RSI for discovering bullish momentum in short periods of time and then how to apply it in Trade Machine. Before we get to the results, let's talk about what makes a good trade candidate. First, we want to see the average return per trade substantially larger than the average loss. We want to see the win rate. We want to see that it has won more often than it has lost. We want to see that the average return and the win rate and the average return for a winning trade are all greater than the baseline. We do this because there's no use in using extra analysis if the result is a strategy that doesn't beat the baseline bullish strategy already. Remember, we're dealing with an entity, the stock market, that is up on average six out of seven years. So we're looking for something that outperforms a standard bullish strategy. This is what we're gonna cover. The idea, the application, and the results. It's that simple. First, we'll take a quick break for three definitions. When we're talking about the 10-day and 21-day moving averages, we're using exponential moving averages. When we're talking about the 50- and 200-day moving averages, we're talking about the simple moving averages. And when we talk about RSI, we use the 20-day period RSI. And here's the idea. Using charts, and with them technical analysis, is the most common form of financial backtesting. Charting is, at every step, using historical data to try to draw conclusions from the patterns in the past and extrapolate them into the future. That is a backtest. Charting is a backtest. At some point, the analysis has to be robust. There does have to come a time when we have to ask ourselves if and when technical analysis adds value to trading. That is, are we doing more than just drawing lines on a chart one at a time? The idea is to identify a trading truth one way or the other. Either there is a combination that meets our criteria for a good technical bullish momentum trigger, or there is not. We enter with no bias. Here's the setup of our study. We looked at one year, two year, three year, five year, 10 year returns, starting from March, 2019 and going backwards, as well as the period from 2007 and 2009, which includes the Great Recession. So we have two bear markets and a bull market. What we would hope to find is the average return per trade is substantially larger than the average loss, that the trades have won more often than they have lost, so a win rate above 50%, and an average return above zero. That this average return and this win rate and the average return for a winning trade are generally greater than the baseline and that it works in a bull and bear market. We used the NASDAQ 100 as a study group and after hundreds of thousands of back tests, we landed on four technical settings. First, we wait until the day that the stock price crosses above the 10 day moving average. We call this the short term momentum requirement. The second is that the stock price is above the 200-day simple moving average. You can call this the we're not in a bear market requirement. Third, we want the 50-day simple moving average to be above the stock price. Or another way to say it is that the stock price is below the 50-day moving average. We can call this the stock has room to rally requirement. And finally, the RSI is less than 70. We can call this the it's not overbought requirement. So simply stated, we're looking for short-term momentum. We want to make sure the stock is not in a bear market. We want to make sure there's room for the stock to rise and that the stock is not overbought. 
That's it. Some other settings we discovered that were optimal. We want to look at 14 day options, so really short trades, and we want to use a 40% limit and a 60% stop. You'll see with the results that having a limit, which is smaller than the stop, still leaves us with larger wins than losses. It just gives us a better win rate. And here are these settings in Trade Machine. We set the stock price crossing up through the 10-day moving average. We make sure the stock price is above the 200-day moving average. We want the 50-day moving average to be above the stock price, which is the same thing as saying the stock price is below the 50-day moving average. And the RSI is below 70. That's it. Now, let's look at the average average return. That is, the average return across all 100 stocks through tens of thousands of trades, the average of all the averages. And now we'll look at the results. We'll start with 2007 to 2009. This is the period that includes the Great Recession and the rally out of it. We'll see the baseline, which is simply owning 14-day calls with the same stop and limit settings as our model, and rolling it every 14 days, returned negative 3% per trade on average. Of course, these trades are on average about five days in length, even though we're using 14-day options. They hit their stops or their limits pretty fast. So negative 3% every two weeks is actually rather disastrous. That would be two trades a month or 24 trades a year per stock at negative 3% every two weeks. So we're looking at approximately 75% loss every year using this during the Great Recession. Now we look at the results of our optimized version of technicals and we see a 6% return every two weeks or as I said earlier a 6% return about every five days since the stops and the limits are hit and that is twice a month for every year that's 24 trades a year we're looking at over a hundred percent return on average next we go to the 10-year return and we can see that these optimized technicals show twice as high of an average return, and this is looking over tens of thousands of trades. Then we look at the five-year return. We're looking at 11% for the optimized technicals versus 4% for the baseline. And over three years, we're looking at 16% versus 7% for an unstructured trade. And over two years, we're looking at 18% versus 6%. And finally, over one year, a period where the market has actually been down. Remember, 2018 was in fact the end of the bull market with the S&P returning a negative 6%. The baseline model returned 1% on average every two weeks, which is virtually zero. This does include a 50 cent per contract commission, although it doesn't include slippage. Whereas the optimized structured technicals show a return of 7%. Note that during the Great Recession period and the last year where there was a down market, the returns are still quite positive and strong and similar. So we are seeing robustness in the model, which is to say that we are seeing similar results during similar times and outperformance during all periods relative to the baseline. Next, we want to look at the return of the average winning trade. So for only looking at the winners, not the losers, how did they do? From 2007 to 2009, the average winning return was 70% with this combination of technicals, and the baseline was 67%. Over 10 years, the average winning return was 85%, while the baseline was 77%. You can see that the average winning return was larger in all years other than the last year. We'll get to that in a bit. That's because in the last year, which was a down market, a bear market, the losing trades were much smaller here than in the baseline, and the win rate was substantially higher. Now let's talk about win rates. From 2007 to 2009, if we look at win rates by stock, 48% were winners during the Great Recession, whereas 27% were winners if you just held calls every two weeks and rolled them. Over 10 years, they were about the same, but the baseline did outperform, although the returns were substantially worse here because the losses were much larger. Over five years, these technical indicators outperformed on the win rate. Over three years, the baseline did quite a bit better, but again, the losses were substantially larger than the winners. And finally, over the last two years and one year, the win rates were higher. The impact of having this technical trigger is understanding the times when you want short bursts of risk exposure. And as a proxy for how often this is triggering relative to just trading calls all the time, from 2007 to 2009, when you wouldn't want to be trading very much because of the Great Recession, using these technical indicators avoided 91% of the trades. 91% of the time when just buying a call every two weeks would have been a trade, the indicator did not fire. So to review, 
Our setup was to look at one year, two year, three year, five year, and 10 year returns, as well as the period from 2007 to 2009, which includes the Great Recession. We wanted to find an average return per trade, which was substantially larger than the average loss. And you see that in the average return. We wanted to see a win rate where it was over 50% across the board or pretty close to it when you get to the Great Recession, which we saw. The average return, the win rate, and the average return for the winning trades are generally larger than the baseline and that it works in a bull and a bear market. So after hundreds of thousands of back tests, we landed on the four technical settings, the short-term momentum requirement, the not in a bear market requirement, the stock has room to rally requirement, the it's not overbought requirement, and we discovered that we wanted to look at 14-day options with a 40% limit and a 60% stop. Finally, we apply it in Trade Machine. We go to the Pro Scan tab. We go by Strategy. I'll just choose the NASDAQ 100 since they're familiar names, but you can choose any ticker group. We will find this scan under Never Trade Earnings, Bullish Technical Bursts. We'll load it and we'll just choose any of the companies we see that it's working with. Let's start with NVIDIA. This is over the last two years. Here it is over the last five years. And while we're at it, we'll add some of our favorite tickers. We've got NVIDIA, Micron, AMD, PayPal, and Microsoft, all with massive returns. And most importantly, it's worked during the bull market. Let's see how it did during the last year where there was a down market and we see great returns, win rates all above 50%. In fact, nothing below a 60% win rate. Of course, you can do this for any stock during any time period. Finally, recall, you can always see what the technical settings are without having to memorize them. They're listed down here below the back test, or even easier, you can simply click on the technical open button and here are the settings that we are now familiar with. The stock crossing up through the 10-day moving average, the stock price already above the 200-day moving average, the 50-day moving average above the stock price, or another way of saying that is the stock price is below the 50-day moving average, and the RSI is below 70. And you can always tap on a backtest tile to see every single trade and every single result. You can see in NVIDIA, it was a two-day trade, here's a seven-day trade, here's a four-day trade, and here's a six-day trade. Again, even though we're using 14 day options, these tend to hit their limits or their stops in about five days. Thanks for watching.